students and audience to Dr. Zia Ahmed YouTube channel. As promised, today in this video we shall be discussing the second part of the poem Reflection, Reflections rather, by Taufiq Rafat. The first part has already been recorded, so let's move on to the second part of the poem. And it is almost here, the second part begins. Must a man waste half a life and a million words before he can say things the way he wants to say them? The poet puts the question first of all that is it necessary that we do a lot of exercise with the help of millions of words and after that we may be able to compose a sentence which may convey our voice as good as possible. This question is very important because it shows that how much time the poet has to spend before he is able to compose a line of poetry. So it's not easy job, it's not a small task to write down poetry. It takes a lot of time and a lot of hard work is involved into that. However, the philosophy that poetry descends from above and comes into the mind and after that it can be written very easily, it does not seem to fit here. There are the people, many people like Wordsworth who would say, a lot of hard work he has to make with the words and then there are the technical aspects of poetry writing, the selection of words, the selection of symbols and the selection of style. All these things demand a lot of hard work on the part of the poet. So that is why the question is put here by the poet. The question also is a type of nostalgia. Why it is necessary that one has to make so much hard work before one can write or compose a piece of poetry but still it gives the hint that a lot of hard work is required. So the reflection poem part 2 begins with a question reflecting the type of nostalgia of the poet, the type of advice of the poet that it takes a lifetime and millions of words to start writing any form of poetry. Right? So let's go to the other part and is this harmony when it comes a look, look quickly there and you will see the rounded patterns hinted at by the winking eel. The poet tells us that after a lot of hard, hard work it's possible to create harmony and that harmony comes with certain patterns. These patterns may not be visible in the beginning but with the passage of time the patterns become visible. The poet uses the image of winking eel. Eel is an watery element you know and that has got different round beautiful a fleshy and shining patterns of body and movement. He says that these things may become slippery like eel but still they begin to form after some time. So in this way hard work does pay. The poet has to make a lot of, lot of hard work and ultimately he is able to compose some of the lines and these lines definitely appear to be beautiful because of the harmony in it and because of the pattern is it. So the basic point which the poet wants to bring through these lines about his writing of poetry through his poem reflection is that after the hard work certain patterns of writing poetry would appear and one needs to bring harmony into those patterns in order to write a good poem. The poet continues while he gives us the hint here. He says there can be no evasion now. The definitions that made us uneasy and were put aside must be faced with words. Now this is the realization. While one composes poetry, thinks about po composing poetry and involves into the philosophical implications of poetry, at that time the poet realizes certain revelations come to him about the concepts and ideas which he had before composing poetry. For example, the poet says that what he is realizing now, he cannot escape that, he will have to face that. For example, first of all, he had certain ideologies, certain concepts, certain word views before he could write poetry. But when he was able to do so, he was able to see that he has to put aside certain things, that he has to deal with certain things bravely and accept what the realities are. So in that way, poetry is revealing, poetry is convincing. Poetry is inspiration and poetry is also teaching not only the person who reads poetry but also the person who writes poetry. So poetry is trying to indicate that his exercise of writing poetry has landed him in understanding, a new understanding of everything that he used to have in the past time is going to change and he has to face it all that very bravely. And further the poet says, 
For words are our elements, a responsible air, without mercy or luck, or only for those who hone technique till the craft flows into the substance like water into sand. So words are our elements. Words are the tools of the poet. Words are the carriers of the message. The words are the medium through which the things can go forward. The poet says that words carry the message in the same way as the air would carry the message. Once the words are out of the mouth or on the paper, the message is carried, you cannot stop it. They become merciless. The words become merciless. And it is our luck that where the words go and what the words convey. So that is why the sharpening of the technique, honing of the technique is very much essential before one writes the poetry. It may be descending down of revelation as most of the South Asian poets would believe, but still it is the technique that needs to be sharpened. It is the learning that needs to be sharpened because each day is a learning as the poet is suggesting here. The technique of writing has to be learned and ultimately it has to be dealt with in such a way that it carries all that message what the poet wishes it to carry. He compares this function of the words with the sand and water and presents a very beautiful image that as soon as water comes on the sand, it begins to absorb and ultimately it becomes one substance. Though the apparent thing that the water is out and the sand is away, but when they do combine together, they become one and the sand becomes fertile and the sand becomes softer and the sand becomes beautiful. Even the flow of water would bring some type of smell out of the sand also. And in this way, it becomes even more attractive and beautiful. But this thing one has to do if one needs to write the poetry. So water and sand image also explains how the words, the poet and the techniques combine together in making one poem. And then the poet says, till each word is irreplaceable but slips into the landscape of a poem as casually as the startled snipe plummets to a cool anonymity. Now, the poem closes with the message that ultimately the reality will shape itself and the poem will be in the shape. So once you have shaped it, it is not replaceable. Words cannot be replaced. It is like a small, beautiful structure which is combined, which is constructed with the help of the words. The poet says that these words who or which have struggled together to come together to become a poem, now they are giving a specific message. If you replace one word, the message would be distorted. So that is why he says that it is irreplaceable. The words are irreplaceable and the poem automatically is shaped. When the poem is shaped, one is very much startled, one is very much surprised how beautiful the piece of poetry has become. The poet compares it with the startling of a snipe, that's a bird with a long beak, he says, that same bird which looks very beautiful, would look separated from the scene, from the landscape in which the bird is present and ultimately the bird disappears when it flies up and the landscape becomes one or the bird becomes the part of that landscape. So in that way, he says that the poem would be very beautiful and product would be very beautiful if the technique is honed, if the words are worked on, if the poet takes care of all that and also takes help from the revelation whichever comes to his mind. His imagination is also very much necessary and everything would combine together in order to make a beautiful poem at which possibly one is started as well. Here I remember Coleridge who gave us the concept of imagination and fancy, primary imagination, secondary imagination. According to him, whatever images we see around us, these images are gathered together inside our brain and ultimately a kind of concoction or cooking type of thing takes place in our brain and our brain reconciles with these images and after that the poet is able to give shape to these images with the help of his words. So not only imagination but also the words, the technique involved in creation of the poetry. It is not simply whatever is coming to mind may be written. No, it is. it takes a lot of work. That is why the poet is telling us all these things. The beauty of this part of the poem is the number of symbols, number of words and images created by the poet. For example, at the end, the snipe bird who flies startled with his beak long, 
goes up and becomes the part of cool in Animiri, that image is really very beautiful. Same is the case with the image of sand and water. That also is the combination and the absorption. And ultimately, the poet brings us to many other symbols. That is the eel also, the beauty, the curve, and the roundness, everything combined together makes into a beautiful image of a poem. And that is the thing which poet is able to explain in part two. So that's it from me for this time. Hope to see you in the next part of the poem very soon. I hope you people have enjoyed it, understood something. And if it is the case, do not fail to hit the subscribe button and the like button. And sometimes the comments may also be dealt with by me. So, so uh, till that time, keep happy, keep smiling. Uh, so time has come to say goodbye. And that's it from me.